H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. So, welcome to the session, friends. Again, uh, I would like to take a couple of minutes to introduce about H2K Infosys, and then I will introduce about myself, and then we will jump into the session. Okay? So, I hope everybody knows about it, guys. But, however, H2K Infosys is E-Verified, which is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia, and United States. So, we provide, we are proud here to introduce about H2K Infosys and we are here to provide you 100% job oriented instructor led face to face online trainings. So we cover in depth syllabus with all latest technologies and of course Hadoop is one of them uh, which is part of our latest technologies and we help you in gaining project work real-time project work experience and of course you will have the lab environment to practice once you are done with the registration, we help you in providing the recorded class videos which is for lifetime access. So one time registration and lifetime access, something good, right? And at the end of the course content, we help you in providing mock interviews and group discussions as well so that you will gain hands-on experience on how things will go in the real-time world and in the market and we also guide you in preparing your resumes and review it and make sure it is uh, taken up for any kind of placement services coming up to us. So we play a major role across all parts of the world guys, majorly North America, South America and Asian countries. And H2K Infosys provides world class services in 80 trainings with real time project work. It's it's not only for individual guys, we also play a major role with respect to corporate trainings also. And we provide special IT trainings for MS students in US and we we almost cover all parts of the SDLC life cycle which means in terms of design, development and majorly on QA automation as well as manual and performance testing and maintenance. So with that said guys, a uh, couple of things that you have to take care from your end is I'm not going through all these points guys I just wanted to convey only one point just use a audio headset or a mic for a crystal clear audio and please mute yourselves when you join the meeting so I'm as I said guys I will unmute you all and please mute yourselves from your end so that it will not create any disturbance for the session and also so you would be good enough to ask any questions at any point of time. So those are the only things, guys, we need to take care. Apart from that, uh, I'm good with everything else. Okay. So H2K Infosys is E-Verified based on Atlanta, Georgia, and we provide software trainings both to our on-site and online customers, and also we provide job placement assistance. And we are here to broadly broadcast that we are a client of G, AT&T, Intercall, Wells Fargo, Verizon, Sony, Bank of America and many other major companies spanned across the world guys. So definitely we would be given much more priorities when taking up uh, any sort of uh, communications or uh, regimes for any openings coming up in this companies. So I'm just telling you that we provide a way guys uh, to make sure uh, we market your regimes also. Coming to introduction about myself friends. So my name is Raji and I'm having around 20 years of experience in IT industry and I'm playing a, as a Hadoop architect as well as a senior Hadoop uh, consultant in one of the MNC and I have been working on Hadoop from past five plus years and I'm part of H2K Infosys from last three and a half years guys and apart from H2K Infosys uh, I work with many other consultancies, I provide corporate trainings, I'm more into freelancing as well. 
that's where much about me guys okay coming to the agenda first thing is introducing faculty to the participants I hope I'm done with that brief introduction with the participants probably we will do is as once we start the actual batch uh, putting these uh, demo sessions aside once we jump into the actual sessions then I think it's a good idea to get to take a quick introduction from the participants as this is an open-ended session I don't think it's a right option to take it now and uh, definitely that will help me in understanding how things needs to be covered because them and based on the backgrounds that you are having and coming from and introducing H2K emphasis we are done with that so we are just left over with the actual agenda of the session which is what why and when big data so majorly I would be concentrating about big data today uh, what is that about what is the relation between this big data and Hadoop how it is playing a uh, big role with the current market etc okay all good friends can we start the session Okay, very good guys then, let's move on. So how many of you have heard about big data and how to friends? Any guesses like what is big data, what should be that about? Any idea? Come on guys, you are always open up uh, to give your thoughts over here, okay? It, uh, I really don't like to have a one-way session. It should be always interactive. That will help us in learning more things. Huge amount of data. Okay, very good. Could be structured and unstructured. Fantastic. You are digging more into it. Very good. That's good. Okay. So now, forget about big data and hard of this. For a moment, let's talk about data. How can we define data? or what is the simplest way to define data. So I can say that data is nothing but some collection of information stored on my machine, on my physical machine. Maybe it is on the hard drive or maybe on the RAM, wherever it is, right? Now when I compare data with the big data, the term itself is indicating data which is coming in bigger volumes or huge volumes of data there is nothing but called as big data so when I say bigger volumes of data it might be terabytes, petabytes, zettabytes or even more than that so just imagine guys when you are dealing with petabytes and zettabytes of data how difficult it could be to come up with some sort of conclusions or analysis etc right now why do we need to talk about big data these days. What is something special about it? I can't hear anything Shubha. Just check if you are connected to your mic. Friends, is that the case with you all? Am I audible to you? Yeah. Okay, yeah, great. Audible. Thank you very much. Yep, yep. Hey Shubha, I could see that you are connected to your mic as well, but I'm getting a lot of disturbance, hence I'm muting you. Aparna. Okay guys, from whomever I'm getting disturbance, I have muted you. Let me unmute you, Aparna. Yep. It's done. Okay. No problem, no problem. But just mute yourself, Saparna. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much. So, three questions that would be coming into our mind when we start learning about a new concept. What is that about and why do I need to learn about it? And when I will come across it in real time world. 
these are three major questions, right? So, okay, I'm learning something about new, but how is it going to help me in the near future? That is what the first question that we will get. Yet, first thing is, what is big data? We just under understood that big data is nothing but huge volumes of data coming in, and the challenge is how we are going to deal with that huge volumes. Because if it is limited in, in, in terms of GBs or MB, is then definitely our single physical machine will be enough to store the data. But when I say petabytes and terabytes of data, how to store the data and how to process the data is the biggest challenge that we might be facing up. Anyways, we will discuss more in detail about those questions and all that. And now why big data? Why are we getting or discussing into those big data concepts these days really? Let me take a very simple example guys. I hope everybody knows about Facebook. Uh, we definitely might be having account on that and every day we use it to play with it, right? In the similar lines, Twitter or something else, etc. also, right? Suppose if you take Facebook and analyze it, FB alone is generating 10 plus terabytes of data every minute. Just imagine friends, per day, how much huge volume of data Facebook alone is generating. In the similar lines, if you take Twitter, Twitter is generating 7 plus terabytes of data. Like that we have many other uh, social networking sites like you can say LinkedIn or maybe Google Plus, etc. All these are our social networking sites where we use to dump a lot of information into it and we will come across real huge volumes of data. It's not only uh, a Facebook or maybe social networking sites, guys. In almost all the industries these days, we are generating huge volumes. The reason why I have selected this is we are more familiar with it and we are more close to these kind of websites, right? So, in almost all the areas, we are generating huge volumes of data. So in other words, even we are responsible of generating big data. So definitely there is uh, something there that we have to learn about big data, right? And in real time world, when we are coming, coming across it. So just go through this uh, circular motion of graph, guys. And if you observe here, since the beginning of time, we have generated only 10% of data and only in the last two years we have generated 90% of data. So there is a drastic change, right? It's more kind of 1 is to 9 ratio. So something happened in the last two, three years and that's the reason we are seeing huge volumes of data. And also if you observe this slide more clearly, there are many other symbols like Facebook, Twitter, a mobile car, etc. So just now I have discussed about Facebook and Twitter and we understood that what is the relation between those two when compared to our uh, big data concepts and all that. So these are few some of few of the input sources where we are getting huge volumes of data. Now, why big data needs your attention? So, okay, I understood what is big data and uh, some of the areas where we are generating this big data. But still, why do I need to learn about it? How is it impacting the market as an expression, right? So, as per IDC, which means International Data Center, big data market would be around $48 billion by end of 2017 and it would create around 5 plus millions of dollar I mean jobs by end of 2016 alone that is what the projection is friends and as of today as of today there is a shortage of around 2 lakh big data professionals only in the United States alone you can just imagine with that across the worldwide how much of shortage is there and uh, how the requirements are going on in the company with respect to big data so all these are something, some good news for us and definitely it will drag our attention towards these kind of technologies, right? So coming up in defining big data in detail. So basically big data is characterized into three types, friends. One is volume, second one is variety and third one is velocity. Very important, friends, okay? So first one is volume, second one is variety 
third one is velocity. So coming up to the volume, which means the first characteristic. As discussed, majorly uh, there are social networking sites where we are generating huge volumes of data such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. Apart from that, there are many other industries where they are generating or dealing with huge volumes of data. Suppose if you take stock market. So someone, let's say your manager came to you and you were working in a stock market company or something like that and he came to you and he asked you like, hey, dude, can you just get me uh, all the stock information that was happening from last 30 years? Generate me a report based on monthly basis uh, and the statistics like what is the uh, min and max of your present stock, uh, the period of time, how long is it, etc. like that with all the information. Will you be able to produce it guys? Definitely not, right? Because our current databases are not supporting to store that much huge volume of data. 30 years of history data, not at all possible, right? Similar lines, we have telecom industry. So you might be a uh, customer of AT&T or Verizon or something like that. And if you go to your company and ask like, hey, I want to get all the billing information from the day one when I'm a customer to you. Is it possible guys? Maybe they will be in the last three months of data or maybe last two months of data and everything before that would be kind of soft delayed or something like that. So even that is not possible. Similarly, we have banking, medical industry, security, many, many areas. If I keep on explaining, there is no end to this guys. In almost all the areas, we are generating huge volume of data and the question that is in front of us is, how to store this data, it's huge volume of data, and apart from that, how to process the data. These are two questions. Now, moving on to the next dimension of big data, which is variety. Again, variety is categorized into three types, friends. Structured, unstructured, and semi-structured data. So any data which has some proper format and columnar storage or fixed schema is nothing but called as structured data. Let's say consider a database where you have multiple tables and each table is loaded out in the form of rows and columns and you can point out to a specific cell at any point of time, right? So it is nothing but called as structured data. Similarly, if you take a file and if you store the data in the form of rows and columns, maybe uh, every column is delimited by pipe symbol or comma symbol or maybe any sort of delimiter and every line again delimited by slash n or tab t, tab, whatever it is. So if you try to give some specific schema, it is nothing but called as structured data. And now, what is semi-structured data? So all your log information, blogs, emails, etc. coming in from different sources or nothing but called as semi-structured data. So it doesn't have a fixed schema, however most of the time it will hold some text information. Suppose if you have the log information, my machine logs if you take. So whatever I am doing on my machine, it will be stored in the form of log at the back end, right? So all that is nothing but called as semi-structured data. And finally, the most complex variety of data, which is unstructured. So all the images, audios, videos, any sort of information that you post in Facebook, etc., there's nothing but called as unstructured data. Suppose today you have posted uh, one of your selfie in FB and you have asked like, hey, this is what I did, blah, 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 you will post. So that is nothing but unstructured data you are generating on FB. So they should have a mechanism to store your unstructured data, process it and make sure it is stored in the database under a specific user ID. So all that needs to be maintained in the backend. And moving on to the last dimension, guys, but of course not the least one. So one more important point we have to remember is all the data that is being generated is coming with 
great velocity as well. So along with val volume, there is one more additional dimension which is velocity that may come in together. So again, the one which we had uh, taken up is machine logs, right? Similarly, astronomy. Suppose if you take scientists, they would be taking night pictures of the sky every millisecond or maybe even less than that and thousands of pictures would be coming up on what is happening over there, right? Which means I'm generating huge volume of data and at the same time the data is coming in with great velocity. So with all this guys, if I simply draw a picture if I simply put down in the form of a graph guys your volume of data is increasing day by day in this direction and the amount of information that you are able to store on your machine is going in this direction. So this is volume of data and amount of information that you are able to store on your machine is going on in this direction which means a lot of gap is increasing here day by day and in other words we are simply losing lot of valuable information. The reason behind it is earlier, long before guys, we used to generate data in gigabytes. Now it's all gone guys. In most of the areas, even with the current projects that you are dealing with, definitely you would be dealing with terabytes of data at a minimum and in some of the projects you are dealing with petabytes of data as well so FB, Twitter all these are dealing with petabytes of data and somewhere on the line definitely we will be coming across zettabytes of data also which means your data is increasing day by day in the volumes so that is where all the challenge is coming in on how to store and process it now let's discuss a bit about history of Hadoop friends so one single point we have to understand is Hadoop is not a single shot developed architecture or maybe one day developed uh, system guys. It took a lot of time to give a good shape to it. In around 2002 time frame there were two friends called as Doc Cutting and Mike Efrilla who were working on a product called as Nutch. So it is basically more into uh, dealing with huge volumes of data. In around 2003 time frame Google has published two of their white papers called as Google file system and MapReduce which deals with these kind of concepts. So they came across these two papers and they thought like hey why can't we introduce a similar kind of concept in our company and let's start doing more experiments on top of it. So that's what they did in, in 2004 time frame and slowly they started experimenting on this uh, new technology. And Yahoo, one of the intelligent company in around 2006 time frame it has high docketing so it's very intelligent and it smelled like hey there is something going to come up in the near future let me start working on it so it has high docketing in around 2006 time frame and they have given a new name to this analysis called as Hadoop and slowly people uh, got awareness on this and every company started looking into it and in around 2008 time frame Facebook has launched a new sub project on top of this Hadoop and they named it as Hive which basically gives SQL support for your Hadoop systems and even as of today friends in Facebook in FB around 30 to 40 percent of the jobs would be running would be processing via HQL. Okay and in the same time frame 
a new company itself was founded guys and they named it as Cloudera and this company deals with this Hadoop and big data technologies only. A very big company friends and just imagine a company itself was established to deal and uh, discuss about big data and huge volumes. And in 2009, Doc Cutting has joined Cloudera this company that was founded recently and he has released his white papers and from then onward guys every company almost everybody got awareness on this and even they started implementing this kind of technologies into that company and they were able to see the real beauty of this architecture okay so if you see friends it started struggling from around 2002 and we were able to give a good shape by around 2009 so let's try to understand a, dip, a bit more in detail about the architecture and what makes the difference from your traditional approaches that you have till date. Okay? So before moving that, friends, any questions till now? Are you able to follow? Good. Yep, fantastic, fantastic guys. Thank you Sridhar as well. Okay, so coming to the traditional approach means to a regular ETL systems. So the majorly there are three steps involved, right? ETL itself, the definition itself will explain us, which is extract, transform and load. So extract the data from different input sources coming in apply all your transformations so it can be of any sort based on the kind of system you wanted to maintain and finally load it into your systems so if you observe the right side portion of the slide guys there is a small diagram right so you are getting input sources from a different uh, varieties of areas such as SEM, CRM, ERP, any legacy system or any third party system so we will extract all the data, apply your transformations. So when I say transformations, it might be your normalization techniques or maybe uh, any sort of uh, asset properties or referential integrity, primary key, foreign key constraints, what not. It's all up to you what sort of transformations you wanted to maintain. And finally load the data into your databases or maybe into your even data warehouses also anything is fine and on top of it we would be applying any sort of BI tools in order to generate reports that can be circulated to your downstreams so this is a traditional workflow that you will generally come across with your ETL projects right now compared to that with your Hadoop systems of course even it has the capability to read the data from different sources and now the sources can be of any type which means it is good enough to process structured data, semi-structured data as well as unstructured data. So if you see all varieties of data are here, right? So documents are there, images, videos are there, blogs and emails are there, everything is there. This raw data would be loaded into your Hadoop systems. So there is no transformations friends, remember very important. So you will simply extract the raw data, load it into your Hadoop systems, apply all the transformation as part of your logic itself and finally dump the results anywhere. It can be to any other systems or maybe you can load it into your data warehouses also. Even that is also valid statement friends. And from there you can connect to your BI tools or whatever it is to generate the reports. So in the whole ETL system you are introducing one more layer called as Hadoop where you will apply all the transformations and this is where you will have all the logic of how to store the data, how to process the data and all sort of intelligent techniques comes into picture here. So some of the major differences friends when compared to your traditional databases with respect to Hadoop. So Hadoop 
supports to have commodity hardware very very important points guys when i say commodity hardware it is it is nothing but a simple normal uh, basic configured machine is nothing but called as commodity hardware i don't need to or maybe companies don't need to spend millions of dollars in getting specialized hardware or maybe any sort of mainframe systems to store huge volumes of data it's not affordable by every company, right? They cannot simply buy mainframe servers which are very costlier and maintain all the data. No. So this is one of the important points. And next one is moving on to the software. So Hadoop is a open source software. I don't really need to get you know uh, explicit licensing and all that to have Hadoop and I can download it from the Apache mirrors available in the Google itself. So whereas with your traditional data warehouses or databases you need specialized software. So hardware and software are two important things where your companies are saving billions of dollars when they move from traditional database approaches to your Hadoop systems and Hadoop doesn't require any data model friends first of all no because you are dealing with the raw data itself you are applying the transformations on top of it itself so there is no concept of data modeling at all in your Hadoop systems whereas it plays a major role with your traditional databases and next point we all know is any type of data is allowed to store and process which means it can be semi-structured, structured, unstructured, what not. Whereas your traditional databases has the limitation to deal with only structured databases. Forget about semi-structured and unstructured, not at all possible. So with all these points, I can see that Hadoop is economical, simple to use and easy to understand as well. Whereas with your traditional databases, first point is it is very expensive and difficult to understand and maintain as well. And one last point I wanted to add up is about scalability friends. Hadoop can linearly scale from 1 to n number of servers. There is no limitation, friends. Let's say today I am dealing with 50 terabytes of data and I have some sort of machines defined in my cluster. And tomorrow I am expecting 10 more terabytes of data to come in. If that is the case, I can simply add some more machines to my cluster without really stopping up the cluster or changing a lot of configurations on it. So it supports scalability, friends, whereas that's not really possible with your databases. It has to undergo a lot many steps and it is not a simple and straightforward architecture to add and delete some machines from the cluster. So these are some of the differences, friends, and at the same time even I can say that some of the advantages of using Hadoop when compared to traditional databases. And friends, this is how your physical Hadoop cluster looks like. So when I say or when I use the word cluster, it is nothing but a collection of machines, guys. So basically, a Hadoop cluster is organized or, you know, it follows a specific hierarchy. A cluster generally holds multiple racks. Okay, and in each of the rack, you can store multiple machines. So if you see this diagram, guys, the whole picture is nothing but called as a cluster. And if you observe, the first row holds all together one, two, three, four, and around five racks. Where, so the piece which I am highlighting is nothing but called as a rack friends. And in each of the rack you have multiple machines. So all, all these blue colors are nothing but your machines. And all together is nothing but called as a cluster. So cluster, it holds multiple racks and each rack again holds multiple machines. So tomorrow down the line guys, when I say uh, I have a hundred machine cluster, Probably it is organized in such a way that it might be having 10 racks, each rack holding 10 machines or so. 
it all depends on how your admin is going to configure them okay but generally this is how uh, the architecture will be laid out and coming to the hardware configuration so if we want to install Hadoop on our machine there are few prerequisites you have to take care of guys first thing is if your machine is a 64 bit processor you can use you should have at least a minimum of 4 GB RAM and if it is a 32 bit processor you should have a 2 GB of RAM at minimum guys because uh, Hadoop is going to uh, take a lot of memory and RAM guys okay and I hope everybody is having Windows as their operating system and if that's the case we need to install a piece of software called as a VMware player or maybe VMware workstation whatever it is it should be fine guys because Hadoop works well with Linux or Unix operating systems friends. It might be Ubuntu, CentOS, Red Hat, whatever it is, but Hadoop is designed to work with Linux operating systems, but not really with Windows. I don't say it's not compatible friends, but it's not a right choice. Even if you go to the real-time projects also, you will be definitely dealing with Linux of, or Unix OS only. So, on our machine, to have multiple operating systems to work together, we are going to install VMware Player, which gives that support. So, these are few things you need to think about when you plan to install Hadoop on your machines. Finally, guys, moving on to the last slide, these are various, at least major companies which are using Big Data and Hadoop technologies. As of today, of course, every company is using Big Data and Hadoop products, guys. But initially, when it was introduced, there are three companies who have, who came up with their own distributions as well. One is Cloudera, which we have discussed just now. And next one is Hortonworks. And the third one is Mapar. Three big and major companies which will deal with big data and Hadoop technologies. So the company itself is introduced to deal with this kind of technology and they have come up with their own distributions as well friends. So when I say distribution, they have developed their own packages and companies can just buy those distributions and install them on that machine so that you will have the complete uh, ecosystem of Hadoop installed on your machine in one single shot. Apart from that, we have many other companies like IBM, Greenplum, Netiza, Microsoft, Astradata, Vertica, SAP, whatnot guys. Every company is of course dealing with big data and Hadoop technologies these days and they were able to see the real beauty of it. Okay, so with that said, I'm done with the content guys. So I think we have 15 more minutes, so I would like to take up any of your questions if you have this. So just feel free to ask any questions in case if you have. It might be with respect to this session or maybe any generic questions related to Hadoop and Big Data Technologies or whatever it is. I'm good enough and, you know, I'm here to take it. Uh, hi, Raji. It's coming here. Hey, hello. Uh, so, hi. Uh, hi. Uh, I have a question. Like, can we use this Hadoop as a, a database, backend database, for a web application directly without any? Mm, not really. But in Hadoop, they have developed some of the ecosystems such as HBase, Cassandra, MongoDB, etc., which will act as an interface between your Hadoop systems and between your front-end applications. So these components can help you in uh, working as a database which connects both the systems. Okay, so like let's assume like uh, we, uh, I, I do have a lot of uh, data uh, which, is, uh, which is sitting from a long, uh, long, long n number of years, okay? So okay. Uh, how, how I can generate the business in business intelligence reports like I need a report uh, from past one year uh, that what is the what is the sales is going on uh, mm -hmm. what is the market value is and uh, how much profit he, he, he earned with respect to product and uh, by the got it and everything. 
So, okay. So basically, whatever the requirement you have, you would be applying in the form of transformations, and you will load all those results to any of the downstream systems. So when I say downstream systems, it might be your Hive tables, or it might be your Cassandra or MongoDB tables, or whatever it is. On top of it, based on them you would be generating your reports using any of the BI tools or anything. So all the BI tools, all the external systems have the capability to connect with these kind of databases. So it hard to open up those kind of uh, routes as well, routers as well. Uh, this Hadoop can directly act as a uh, report generator uh you know, what I'm saying is, your Hadoop can be your base system. On top of it, you can connect with any of the BI tools to one of these components and generate their reports. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. So all those can be integrated. That's what I meant to say. Even in your real-time projects, not sure if, you know, in which company you are working in, majority of the projects, Hadoop projects, they will, you know, uh, they will treat in such a way that your BI projects and Hadoop projects come together. It's not that it is a mandatory statement, I mean, but most of the cases, your Hadoop projects, it will be integrated with your ETL projects, integrated with your BI projects, etc. So there will be multiple components acting together to make sure you have an end-to-end -end working system. So do you have any idea like uh, what is the best BI tool uh, with, which is supported uh, uh, with Hadoop? Anything goes work with, uh, works with it. There is no specific uh, BI tool, any recommended BI tools, but I mean Hadoop has opened it and uh, you can use any sort of BI tools. Okay. Yep. Thank you. No issues. You are welcome. And of course that's a very good question as well. Uh, hey Raji. Hey, hello. Uh, hi, uh, this is Aparna here. Um, one uh, basic question I have is, uh, this session, what is the focus of it? Is it like focus on somebody becoming a big data developer or an analyst or a big data admin, I mean Hadoop admin or it's generic? Uh, what is that focus uh, on? This session is basically a generic session, so no matter you want to become a big data developer or an admin or maybe a data scientist or maybe analyst, whatever it is, this is a basic concept which everybody is expected to know about. But of course, coming to the roles, definitely you will have many roles such as admins, developer roles, data scientist role or BA roles, etc. And uh, we basically concentrate on the developer role, and not completely into the developer role. It's kind of 70-30% uh, uh, with respect to the developer as well as admin roles. So this whole course is intended for developer as well as admin? Right. Okay, so what, what else do you think need to be done if uh, somebody is looking at the analyst kind of role? Uh, analyst kind of role, you will be concentrating on few other components as well, such as, you know, uh, some statistical knowledge should be there. Apart from that, uh, some of the data scientist concepts would be also dealed with BS. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. No issues, Shep. And, and these sessions would be recorded, I mean, I know it's being recorded. Would these be mm -hmm. sent to us too? Uh, yeah, hopefully I think this session is a free end session, so it will be shared with you. Okay, I'm also part of the regular course. I've already signed oh, up. Oh, so. Okay, okay, okay. So definitely you will be getting it then. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Good to hear that. So, again, welcome to H2K Infosys then. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So friends, any other questions? Uh, well, friends, you can feel free to type in the chat window as well. Hey, yeah, someone was saying something. Rajiv, this is Navi Diyadi. Okay, so... Hey, hello. Uh, like, uh, at, uh, how much uh, uh, the code uh, coding percentage uh, we need uh, 
we will be coding, uh, we'll be code uh, using uh, Hadoop. Like we, uh, how much knowledge we need to have in the code Java? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question again. So I, it's not only to you. I think many of them will have this question in their mind, though they bring it or they don't bring it up. But basically, guys, in Hadoop, there is a concept called as MapReduce, which basically deals with core Java. Of course, I say that MapReduce is a language independent component, but however, majority of the projects, 95% of your real-time projects, when they are dealing with MapReduce, they will prefer to use Core Java because it's more kind of a worldwide, uh, you know, accepted uh, language, right? So when I say Core Java, here you have to learn about uh, all basic OOPS concepts like, you know, interface, polymorphism, whatnot, everything, all OOPS concepts, string handling, exceptional handling, exception handling, etc. So these are few basic concepts you have to learn when you start discussing about MapReduce and this is the only component that deals with Java guys. All other components have their own languages, easy to understand, simple to implement and you know you can easily get accustomed to them. This is the only bottleneck and hiccup for our course content. Majorly for the people coming up from different backgrounds. So if you are good enough on this core Java, I mean again when I say core Java, even if you have some basic knowledge on C++ also, that will suffice this because almost similar kind of concepts you will apply in Core Java also and that knowledge itself is enough for you to understand and learn about with MapReduce. Okay? Okay, yeah, thank you. Yep. And one more question like uh, I see like uh, uh, agenda like uh, the training uh, 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 materials, okay. So I see like HEWA, PIG, HP, SCOPE, Bloom. Right. So these are the part of uh, uh, the concept uh, exactly related to the uh, Hadoop. Right. Those are part of your Hadoop ecosystem. So tomorrow I will be discussing about the Hadoop ecosystem, how it was developed, why we do, why do we need to have those many components in Hadoop, what is the advantage of, advantage as well as the disadvantage of each of the components, some of the use cases of Hadoop. So that's the agenda I have for tomorrow. Okay? So I will deal with all those introduction of those components. Uh, hi, quick question. I'm from Oracle DB side. Uh, what is the preferable core area I can look into big data? So now I do a straight away I can give you the answer that you can uh, basically concentrate on Hive, Pig, HPS, Cassandra, MongoDB, etc. No problem, you are welcome. MongoDB also so, is a part of uh, the training, uh, Raji? Uh, no, we would be dealing with HBase. So HBase is kind of, you know, uh, the base for all these components, Cassandra, MongoDB, etc. So if you know HBase, it will be easy for you to understand Cassandra and MongoDB. And these two concepts are project specific. Not every project will use this Cassandra on MongoDB unless there is a specific requirement. Okay. So it, it depends on a kind of the use case that you deal with business use cases. But as per our course content almost those are the components you will generally come across with any of the project in Hadoop. So I'm just trying to make it more generic and you know you can apply it 
in any of your projects in general. And uh, Raji, like uh, one more question. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's let's assume like uh, once we're done with the, all the training and uh, uh, like if, if we are good with and uh, we we placed in the okay. Of, uh, okay. So can we get any uh, any support, real time support? Like if we, if we have any any issue or any problem uh, we, we are facing, can we get any support from your end or offline or some sometime? Uh, I mean when you are. Working yeah. on any of the projects, you mean yeah. to say the support? Yeah, yeah. So support, uh -huh. support. Like if we stuck with any technical uh, issues or something, so we could not able to proceed further. So at that time, can we can we try to reach you uh, to get a solution for that? No issues. Yeah, no issues. You can drop me an email. You can feel free for that. Oh, okay. Yep. Anything else, friends? Uh, I think we have four more minutes. So still, guys, I will open up the questions session. Hey, Raji, um, just another question. Uh, Aparna mm -hmm. here again. Uh, what would be the timing? Is this going to be the same timing every day going further? Yeah, generally it would be at 9 p.m. EST. It would be five days a week, Monday to Friday, and it will be at 9 p.m. EST. Unless and until specifically mentioned, guys, um, this is the general timing that we would follow. Okay. Or, or is that good for you? <laughs> yeah. uh, is that fine with you, Abhinav? 9 p.m. PST. Uh, actually, I'm 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 in PST time zone, so I'm I'm free oh. the whole of the morning time. But none of these people whom I uh, uh, looked at have. Uh, openings around that time. It's only EST timing. I don't know why people only look at EST. <laughs> because uh, it's, it's a bit difficult for me. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know people would be joining from different zones like EST, BST, even IST guys are there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, generally, you know, these guys will concentrate on EST zones. Yeah. Ma majority of the inquiries and people will be joining from EST zone. That's the mm -hmm. reason. Yeah, we have like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how long does the class last? So, depend it will be generally one hour, at max of uh, one hour, fifteen minutes or twenty minutes. I mean, depends on if you have more questions, then it may extend for five to ten more minutes. That's all. Weeks, as as discussed, it will be five days a week, Monday to Friday. And totally it would be around 35 hours of course content. So you can just go through, you can browse the website, you can get all the details of it. Yep. Yep, so it would be around 35 hours of training, 30 to 35 hours of training with pain. So are we getting, uh, are we getting any uh uh, like uh, install installation support, uh, how we how we can install and configure. Yes, yes, definitely. I, I will take care of it. So I will help you during the course content itself. I will tell you what are the different ways of installing Hadoop. That's the first point, and you can choose whatever you're comfortable with. So I will explain what is there on my machine, and also other ways to install Hadoop on your machine as well. So whatever comfort. I mean, based on your comfort zones, you can select one of them, and you can also start playing with it. Thank you. Okay. All good, guys. Any other questions before I wind up the session? Okay, then I uh, hope you enjoyed it, friends. So let's meet again tomorrow or maybe any time, whenever you are free, and we will discuss more in detail. Hope you enjoyed the session, yes. Thank you all. Thank you.